Hi guys, Todd here. Today we're going to be having a look at the Edge Kit. This is a, a new setup from DigiFlavor and this is a Joule 18650 200 watt box mod and it comes with a sub tank on top. Now, what sets this apart from all the other ones? Well, this is... Wireless charging is back. Yes, it is. Uh, four years ago this was around. Uh, I remember when uh, it was VaporShark that our DNA uh, came out and they used wireless charging for this as an option and, and you've got the same thing going on for this you can bung this on a wireless charger a QI compatible wireless charger and, and it will charge your batteries but um, we'll cover all that as we go along now pricing I can only see this kicking about in the States just now and it seems to be about $60 and I do believe it's in pre-order and it's not actually released for another week or so yet could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's mid-December before the public can get their hands on this. As always, we'll go in for some close-ups and then we shall have a summary at the end. Now what I have here, it's a, a pre-production packaging. I don't actually have the retail packaging. I don't actually have the manual either here, so uh, this is everything that I got. It just came in a, a random box. But uh, basically you're going to get the mod, you're going to get the Spectre, you're going to get, uh, this is a 5mm capacity and I think with this glass tank here you're looking at 4mm capacity. It does use mesh coils, I think it comes out about 0 0.2 ohm. You do get a little baggie that comes with all the spare o-rings under the sun and you also get a USB-C cable here as well. Uh, that's the main thing, you've got USB-C charging on this device. Now the tank itself, I, I'm not a huge sub -ohm user, uh, or sub -ohm tank user I must say, but uh, you know we've got the drip tip up here, well that just went for a flyer, uh, 810 drip tips will fit in this, uh, I have got 810 drip tips in here, and just to show you that, I can just pop that one in there like that, and there we go, that's a Cyan Mods 810 drip tip. Uh, to fill it, it's just a quarter turn, and off she pops kidney holes here, it's the, the usual affair, there's nothing really that I have to point out here, but you do have the, you know, you've got this like diamond cut going around here and here that matches up with the mod. Adjustable airflow down the bottom, you can turn it up and down, if you want to get in, change your coil, just unscrew the base, and we've got one of these mesh coils. We do have big wicking holes or slots going around here. It's not the biggest bore I've seen in there, uh, but this is, yeah, you're not going to get a restricted, uh, restricted? You're not going to get a mouth to lung from this. It's your typical mesh sub ohm tank. This is actually the one I've been using for the past couple of weeks and I'll, I'll let you know exactly what I think about flavour and the way it's been performing. Now the mod itself, uh, what I'll do is I'll put up a little screenshot here and give you the spec on the sizes and so on. But for a size comparison, you're basically looking at the almost the exact same as the Inokin Proton. It's kind of got the same size and feel as you get with that. Going around here, you can see you've got the, your diamond cuts going in here. Uh, we have the same on this side here. We have a firing button up here, which is clicky clicky. Uh, this is... This is one of the stiffest firing buttons I've come across on a mod in I, I don't know how long. Um, it's very, very stiff and, and personally I think it's in kind of a, a strange position as well. We've got a 1.54 inch uh, screen going on here. This is, uh, do you know, the screen's very good. I'll show you this in a second. Edge written up here. We've got up and down buttons here, selection buttons. And once again, we have the USB-C here. And you can already tell that if I just run my fingers around this, that it's a fingerprint, the magnet. Uh, yeah, it gets pretty messy, this one. I I only have the black one. Uh, I don't know what the other colours are going to be like for fingerprints, but yeah, it does pick them up very, very quickly. Up the top, we do have our 510. Uh, now that the tank goes on here, no problem. You'll get a 25mm atty on here, fine. In fact, I think you'll probably get about a 27mm on here without any overhang. The 510's screwed in there quite the thing, but I will say, and, and I don't know if this will show up, uh, quite well here but if I run my finger over the top there I can feel this is proud this 510 just sits proud a tiny tiny little bit and, and I'm, I'm talking a bow here just a fraction I have to stop saying bow here because nobody outside Scotland knows what that means but uh, that is the mod now 
One of the main things about this is that if we pop the back off, you just push this button here and that'll come off. We'll put this to one side and um, this is, right, we have wireless technology going on here. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this more as we go along, but basically, yes, you can buy a wireless charger for this device. It's a QI technology, so a lot of the other wireless chargers that are on the market, they already use this technology, but uh, yeah, all, everything's inside here. You can see you've got your little contacts here, so wireless parts in here, and the power is transferred, the charge is transferred from the contacts here to your little prongs here, and it's going to charge the batteries in inside. This is a dual 18650 mod and it does 200 watts. Now the desk charger that you can buy, once again this is not included. Now I will say the mod itself I think is about $59.60. That's the only price I can find for it. But this charger which is QI compatible uh, they gave me a recommended retail price they're saying this is going to be $15. Uh, but uh, yeah you can see you've got a little notch sits here and your mod just gets cradled in there so we've got the the little uh, excuse me i'm on my phone here just now but uh, you've got your little digi flavor wireless charger take your mod uh, i'm just going to throw this on here you can see you've got your notches there at the bottom but it just kind of falls in make sure it's pushed right against it and nothing much is going to happen give it a couple of seconds and this will come up and then in a couple of seconds more can actually see the battery indicators moving there it is charging and then it does come up and say that the batteries are charging now putting the batteries in I have no issues we have plus and minus on both sides so you know take your ribbon out positive up on this side uh, the spring contacts are both on the top fold this one over and the positive is going this way on that side easiest way of putting the door on remember you've got the two contacts at the bottom that are going to go to those pins there i just put the top slide it in like that hold it down and click uh, i've no issues with the door popping off or not being held on well it's just it's all good there uh, now for switching this on we have five clicks on so one two three four five digi flavor and there we go. I told you it's a great screen. I mean, it really is a good screen. And one, two, three, four, five. And off she goes. Once again, I will say that this firing button is very, very stiff. Uh, very stiff. But you know, you want to go up and down your wattage or up and down anything, then just using this here and it goes up and down no problem. And you can see here that you're going up in 0.1 increments. And once you go over the 100 watts, then it's just going to go up in increments of one and all the way up to 200 watts. All the information is clearly laid out on the screen. I have no issues with that at all. I will also say that it does round robin. So I can go from 200 watts over to the five and I can go back the way. If you want to go into settings, then you're just going to push the fire button quickly three times. So one, two, three. And once it's done that, you can see that by, you know, we've got M1, we have a memory bank here. We have quite a few memory banks actually, but we'll get back to that. One, two, three. There we go. I'm pushing the firing button again. I'm going through the various settings that we have available here. So I can go memory one, two, three, four. Power mode. I can then go through all my various settings here. Uh, you've got all the regular stuff going on here, you know, like power curves, temperature control, bypass, and so on. It's all the kind of gear that you've seen before. Uh, we do have, uh, you know, you have standard powerful and soft settings for power mode and just fire again. You can do things like lock in your resistance as well. And it's, a f you know, I'm not gonna make out that it hasn't got anything on here that you haven't seen before, but, it does have all the bells and whistles. I do like the fact that, you know, when you're in temp control mode, you can go down and you can change your wattage as well. That's always a good thing. Regarding the screen, if you hold down the fire button and the up and down button at any time, I just push that, then I'm up max just now, go the other way. So I'm holding the two buttons down so I can turn the screen brightness right down or I can go all the way back up. I just have it at 100%. If you want to hold down the two buttons here together and you're going to lock everything here 
once I'm actually in that locked mode, I can also push this fire button here three times, and once I've done that, that actually locks everything. You can see everything's actually locked up here. Uh, three clicks here, and my firing is back, uh, but I'm still locked down here. Hold down the up and down button, and that's me unlocked. Now one thing that um, <laughs> I had to read the manual to figure this one out, it took me a while, but uh, if you're basically, if you're in settings mode, so we'll wait until the screen comes back on, so one, two, three, so in this setting mode now, if I hold down the up and down button now, it takes me into this, so you can reset your puff count, which I've already done, you can mess about with RGB settings, so it's... Yeah, it's not my kind of thing, but yeah, you can go in and you can play about with the colours and things like that. Now, the replay function that's on this board, um, it, yeah, I've just set it to five seconds. That's as maximum as it'll go. So if I push my firing button here just now, it's going to fire away for the five seconds on what I have here. Now, that's pretty much it for the edge. There we go. We've got the, the tank on top. We'll go back up top and have a blether. So how has life been with the edge kit? Well, uh, I'll start with the sub tank. Uh, so the Spectre is, it's not bad. It, it's not bad. I mean, obviously we're back, you know, nearly everybody's using these mesh coils just now. Uh, life expectancy in these coils, longevity is very good. I mean, across the board for most of them, I've been impressed with them. And this one is no different. It doesn't stand out as being stellar in uh, terms of flavour, but it's definitely not bad, and uh, yeah, I'll have a quick vape just now. I, I will say, the replay feature again, if you have it enabled, so you can adjust it between one and five seconds, so if I just hold my finger down and take a vape for a couple of seconds, nothing happens. If I just tap the button, it will run for whatever you programmed it. So I had the full five seconds. So just a tap in the button and away it goes. I will also point out that once again, you do have the RGB colors on here. So you've got this little guy down here and you've got the colors going on up here. So yeah, you, if you're into that kind of thing, it's there. I will say the screen on this is it's very good. I have no issues with the screen at all. In fact, I, I do kind of like it and uh, I find the menu system quite easy to get around. Uh, I will, as always, state that you should read the manual, unlike myself. Um, I actually had to, to find out how to get into the settings for the RGB and whatnot. It took a fair amount of, um, you know, pushing buttons and I ended up reading the manual. So once again, you know, three clicks take you into the settings, then hold down the two buttons and that will take you into your puff count and your RGB settings and your replay feature. Uh, but all in, it's, yeah, I, I do, I kind of like this layout and, and I like navigating around it. No issues whatsoever with that. I will say for the tank, again, uh, this is it fully open. That may, I mean, that's, there's a lot of air going through that. There really is. Um, I mean, I usually close it down to you know, a, a slightly restricted draw, which suits me, and I'm vaping about 40 watts, and no issues with it at all, but you can open it up and give it some, give it some beans. Uh, going back to the mod, I, I, I will say that, being brutally honest, I don't have any issues with the mod. I really don't. It's the firing button that just grinds my gears. It really does. If you hold it like that and push it with your, your finger here, God damn, it's stiff. Really stiff. I mean, I had two, I've got two of the mods and uh, they're both the exact same. This for me is a thumb firer and the reason it's a thumb fire is so I can get some welly behind it and some pressure on there and, and it will fire away. It works every single time, but I just wish that it just wasn't so stiff. It's the, It really puts me off the mod, this. Uh, the, the position where it's, it's kind of angled there as well does lend itself to being a thumb fire. You see your thumb just kind of sits across there. So yes, that, that's what I would say for it. Use your thumb and, and you'll be okay, but it's, yeah, if you're, uh, why? Anyway, uh, so as a whole, the whole mod, I'm struggling to criticize it. it it's, 
There's so many dual 18650 200 watt sub ohm tank mods across the entire market. This one is definitely, it's not shit. It's not bad at all, aside from the firing button for me. Um, power output seems to be fine. Temperature control, I just used a stainless steel coil. Uh, it seems a little bit weak on the, the kickoff, but then once it gets up to temperature, everything seems to be okay. Wireless charging is the main thing now. It has wireless charging and it's QI compatible. Now, if you have any wireless charging pads or devices around the house, the chances are they're going to be flat. You're not going to put your mod down on something like that flat to get it to charge. Um, you know, you don't want your tank lying flat down. It'll possibly leak. Uh, so this, the charger is going to be an additional $15 according to the information I was given. So you have to go out and buy it separately. I don't have a big deal with that because, well, you, you know, it's also something if you have a wireless charged phone, then it's somewhere else you can charge your phone as well. The things I find strange is that, now this uses USB-C um, on the front here. Uh, so you can do firmware upgrades and charge your batteries and so on. But it, it's only 1.5 amp. I find that strange, you know, especially for USB-C, I thought it would be 2 amp charging, but no, it's 1.5. The other thing is that when you use the wireless charger, it is 1 amp charging. So it is not fast, it is, it's it's slow, it's, it's not, it's almost like a trickle charge. Well, it's going back to how we used to charge our batteries, but yes, wireless charging is only 1 amp. In some respects, I think that is a good thing because if you have your wireless charger on your desk and you're vaping away and you're constantly sticking this on the wireless charging pad, then it's not blitzing your batteries with a charge. It's almost like a trickle charge, if you like, it's slow. And it's not going to be so detrimental towards your batteries. Me, personally, I, I, I would be a bit loath to vape like that. I am no battery expert. I, I'm really not. I'm a bit of a dinosaur when it comes to batteries. I mean, I like to take my batteries out and char charge them in a battery charger. Uh, if you have a decent balanced charger inside here, then it should be no big deal charging your batteries internally. But charging them all the time, I, I just don't see that as being a good thing. Uh, me personally, I would probably vape away with it and then just, you know, once it's getting quite low in the batteries, then I would chuck it on the wireless charging and take it from there. But I am no battery expert. Uh, there are other people in this game that know a lot more about this kind of thing and should be able to give you more information on the, you know, the effects of constantly charging your battery. But me personally, I wouldn't leave it on the wireless charger all the time. Is it something that we really need back in the vaping game? Once again, it was out four years ago and it disappeared. Um, I, th things have changed uh, and kind of in the technology game, you know, a lot of people do use wireless charging, so I can see the attraction to it now, but personally, I think it's a bit of a gimmick, but if you're a sucker for technology and gimmicks like me, then go for gold but bear in mind it's another $15 if you want to buy this charger so that's pretty much it for the edge kit from Digiflavor um, one last thing I will say and I can barely I mean just I'm looking at this here just now putting daylight behind this yes that 510 is slightly slightly raised it's not a deal breaker because it's just a tiny tiny little gap and, and I can barely see it uh, but it's one of these things I think I should point out again uh, it's not bad the only criticism I've got is the firing button everything else is done quite well but thank you to Digiflavor or Geek Vape whatever you want to call them for sending this on to you guys as always thank you so so much for watching and we'll catch you next time bye for now